Hey everybody, we're going to be just taking a few minutes and looking at sends on faders. This is something I've got a few questions about, and so I thought I would explain a couple scenarios when you're going to want to use this. The first is if you're making a headphone mix for musicians you're recording with. Not every mix is going to be perfect for actually the headphone mix that musicians are going to want. They might want more of themselves or more of the bass or more of the drums, and you're going to want to keep a separate headphone mix going on your speakers or your headphones. So we typically would use sends for that. We could do a send to an output. Now, with right now, you can see I don't have my main big interface hooked up with all the other outputs, but we need a, a device that actually gives us multiple outputs. First two, left and right, would be for our outputs. Then the other ones we could use for headphone outputs. So we can make a number of different Q mixes here with all of these. So I would set the output of a send to one of these. And we would hook up the headphone device or headphone straight to that output. Once we did that, we would set up different levels. And we'd want to, let me do this with this one here. We'd want to make this so that it was pre-fader. Pre-fader means it's going to send out before our faders here. And we want to do that because if we send it post-fader, anything we're adjusting in the mix is going to be adjusted in their headphones. If we do it pre-fader, then it will actually be a separate whole mix. Now there's a few steps we can do with this. Once we have all of those sends set up, we don't necessarily have to recreate our overall mix though. And that's because, let's turn this on for a second. We're going to turn on sends on faders. Now the little yellow things here show what our sends are. Bus one and then bus two. So for instance, with bus one, let's actually make a selection here. I'm going to come up, I'm going to say copy fader to send. Now the faders are going to show up with what the actual mix is. Now I'm actually going to undo this because what I did was just change my mix so that these reverb buses were actually matching the, the faders. But this, that's exactly how you would do it to make it so that the sends going to the headphones had the same levels as what your overall mix did. And then we can adjust these. And one of the cool things about this is say you have an iPad connected with the Logic app. And right now I just have my phone connected. But I can come through and use my phone or in the case of the iPad, having multiple channels, and we can actually craft the headphone mix using faders with our fingers instead of one at a time with the mouse. So that's something to really think about as an option. Now, the other thing that goes with this, if we want to pan things separately, then we'd actually need to come through and say independent pan. And now with this turned off, this is the normal pan. With this turned on, this is the pan for that send. So we can actually pan this out differently than the original channel strip panning is. But of course, we can also copy pan to send and it will mimic the pan on the channel strip as well. So this is just a super easy way to make cool headphone mixes. Really efficient. If someone says, hey, I need something different in my headphone mix, you can literally just turn this on, go to the right bus, move your faders on your iPad control app, and you're going to get the mix that they want. Okay, so the other thing we can do with this is get our reverbs or other effects where we're using the sends. So for instance, we have these sends going to bus one. The input for bus one is this plugin right here. Now, instead of having to adjust each of these knobs individually to get how much of the reverb I want, I can put this on sends on faders and then use again the iPad app or my iPhone app to tack with tactile touch move those up and down. And with the iPad you can do multiples at a time so you can really get the exact reverb levels that you want. So this is a super easy way to move the controls for how much is going out to the reverb onto our faders down here and then make the changes as needed. Once we're done 
We turn it off here, goes back to our normal mix, and we have our levels as we want them. At any time, of course, we can turn this back on and continue working and going back and forth. So that's why sends on faders is such a cool feature. It's something that is super efficient and super easy to use once you kind of wrap your brain around it. And it allows us to have that panning option for our sends as well which without this feature, we don't have any way of actually changing it or controlling it. Okay, hope you're having a great week. Check out my other videos and we'll do another one soon.